I'm hanging out here at the V8 guest house, drinking a cold beer outside in the garden, courtesy of my very friendly hosts. But I see there's a party going on here, across the road, there's a bry fire and people playing in the street, children. I was thinking I want to go and check it out, man. I don't know if I'll get chased away, but uh, let's go check it out. I'm gate crashing here, but this is Jonathan and you're, what's Denzel. your name? I'm Denzel. Denzel, Denzel, so like Denzel Washington. Kind of. No, like Denzel <laughs> January. Denzel January, and uh, Jonathan just told me what this party is about. It's my son's seventh birthday, it's his crown birthday, so we're just enjoying ourselves because this morning we buried our, it's my cousin, our aunt. My cousin, we, we buried, we buried our, our aunt. Okay. There was a funeral, so just for, like, I can cheer myself up. We're enjoying ourselves here and just crying and stuff and enjoying my son's seventh birthday. Okay, okay you already, like yesterday he was his birthday there, but we celebrated the day and so yeah. We, I'm sorry to hear about the family and stuff, yeah, but like I said, it's what it was like, today was our aunt's uh, funeral and stuff, but we sit here ourselves up. We're enjoying ourselves here. We're by, like, by, by, by seven Sunday, my boy's seventh birthday. Yeah. Just like, partying here and just having a bride and just family together here and just enjoying ourselves. I'm sorry to hear about your aunt. Yeah. And uh, this is how it is in Sutherland. You can just like say hello and people are very friendly. So I'm just going to hang out there for a little while. And have a, I've got my beer, own beer here. Yeah? Okay. Have a little drink and then yeah. I'm going to go back yeah. and edit. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you, thank yeah, you okay. so much. Okay, that was a really cool little thing before I go back to work again. I just met these guys, they're all very friendly. It's a good party. And this is the way the world should be. Everybody should just hang out and forget about their shit. Their bullshit, man. Just hang out. Quiet. Solid. Shot, guys. So Etienne just picked me up, so we're doing the SALT South African Large Telescope, very exciting, this will be the last bit of filming for Sutherland and then I'm going to edit the vlogs and release them and this is very exciting stuff man, how are you Etienne? No, I'm fine thanks, no complaints Cool, here we are, it's a high elevation and uh, yeah, we'll hear about the rest now this is why I come to Sutherland. You come here for the stars and we are at SALT, which stands for the Southern African Large Telescope. So it's a conglomerate of international people and they all have a share in this, like Etienne told me, just told me they have a share in this place. And they come here to observe the stars or the cosmos or whatever. And it's about 18 kilometers outside of town, out of Sutherland. I'm very privileged. Etienne is giving me a little private tour. He works here. And uh, yeah, that's one of the big reasons you come to Sutherland. It's a high elevation, it's uh, not a lot of light pollution, and uh, that's one of the reasons why. What is the other reasons, Etienne? Uh, clean air. Clean air. It's one of the most stable tectonial plates that we oh. light pollution. One of the most stable tectonial plates. That, that this is on. That this is on. So there's a lot of, I'll show you now, there's a, actually quite a few telescopes here. And uh, let's go check it out. Etienne is going to be our guide and he's going to show us everything. So uh, what we're doing is, uh, we're just going to walk through, I don't know how it works here, Etienne is an expert, so I'm just going to follow him with the camera and we're going to talk through it on this little video recorder, audio recorder, so we're just going to do it. Okay, let's go, man. Yes. That's basically what's happening here. This is the, this is the control room. 
where everything is being done during nighttime operations when the telescope is actually operational. So there's normally two, uh, two, two guys on shift, telescope operator, uh, scientist. Um, the scientist would determine which observations would be done for the night. Um, everything is scheduled during the during the year uh, when stuff is visible. Uh, so they would do the scheduling and once if they come up to do the, the observations, everything is already in a schedule and uh, he would determine which instrument is to be used for that specific observation that they need to do. And then we get a, a then, then we've got a telescope operator um, which guides the tele or which which actually points the telescope to wherever the scientist would like which observation he would like to do and everything is done automatically basically the telescope is run by itself with automatic guiding and so on should the telescope lose the auto guidance then the telescope operator he or she would, they would then manually take over and try and finish that observation basically uh, some of the observations we do is like between two, two and three hours long so you don't want to physically lose that observation just due to automatic guidance that is maybe lost. So that's basically what's happening here. Are people in here like 24 hours 7, 24 7? No, no, no. no uh, we are optical telescope, so we light dependent. Um, so only only after dusk, uh, between dawn and dusk, that we do, uh, physically do observations. So in the summertime, the night is very short, so, the, so it's very short um, observation time. Obviously in the winter, winter months, we've got longer nights, and so the observation time during the winter is much longer. Okay, this is our, um, it's actually called EDS environmental display. So we actually monitor our own humidity up here, uh, telescope temperatures. Uh, so we actually close the telescope if the wind speed reaches more than 60 degree, uh, more than 60 kilometers per hour. That's been measured on, or that's the indication on, on that side. So if that red or green dot moves past that, that circle, that is a 60, um, 60 kilometer um, maximum, but then we actually close the telescope. This is a spectrometer room. Um, we're actually underneath the telescope now. This is the very central point of the telescope. The telescope is actually the one level above us that's on the first floor. This is one of our bigger instruments. It's called HRS, High Resolution, high resolution, resolution Spectrograph. This is actually what is in this um, environmental chamber. Uh, that's uh, a, a vacuum tank. All these optical and mechanics is inside this vacuum tank just to keep everything clean and temperature stable. Um, two camera barrels on this instrument. One specializes in the um, infrared part of the light spectrum and other in the, in the uh, ultraviolet. I keep them at very low temperatures. It's like your, it's, uh, the CCDs, the charge couple devices, like in your smartphone, works optimum or capture the photons better if it's keep in the, at the low temperature. So I keep this one at minus 120 degrees Celsius, that one at minus 110 degrees Celsius. So I don't know if you keep your cell phone in a fridge for the night, if it will take better photos tomorrow, but um, I'm not sure. But these guys they actually work like this. Um, the chips on those are like, almost like five million bucks each. So it's, it's, quite a, it's, it's quite technology that is in there. What is a HRS, high resolution spectrograph? What is a spectrograph? A spectrograph is like, in the science class, you, uh, you take the light and you shine it through a prism and you get the rainbow colors at the other end. Basically, what, uh, what happens here? So that's our prism. It's called a grating with very, very fine lines, every one at a different angle. So a uh, uh, spectrograph is basically taking the light putting it through uh, a grating and to spread out light in all the different frequencies. So if we do an observation and we take the light, put it through the spectrograph onto the camera and so I know which light, come, uh, which light came in if they came light in at a specific frequency. So I've got the, so we've got a, like a chart, so I would know if there's light in that frequency, then there's oxygen out there. If there's light in that frequency, there's, there's helium out there. Or, so we know a lot of, well not a lot, but basically everything light frequencies. So that's what a, this a telescope specializes in spectrographs. Um, so we take the light, spread it out, so we know if we did if, if we did get light in a specific light frequency, then we know that is out there. So that's that's just a very short of what a spectrograph is. 
we're going to enter the mirror coating plant. This is an optical telescope with the diameter, the diameter of, the, of the mirror is 11 meters, but there's 91 individual segments. And the telescope is actually open and the mirror segments need maintenance. And this is what's happening in here day in, day out, 24-7. Okay. So you actually just have mirror cleaner basically. This is, a, this is a mirror coating plant. So once the mirror gets taken out once a year, if, uh, each segment gets taken out from the array uh, uh, on top, raw down here, it's been stripped of his aluminium coating, then it's just a piece of glass again, then we recoat it, we make it a new, brand new mirror. Yeah. Everything is under vacuum once again. Uh, the vacuum is well, it's like a vacuum cleaner in a room, it's a cleaning process, taking out the moisture, all um, dirt and an end to and it helps with the evaporation process of the aluminium to coat the new mirrors. I'm looking for where I hide the aliens somewhere, now I hide the aliens is somewhere. <laughs> uh, somewhere. <laughs> okay, so these are the actual mirrors that is cleaned in this place. So one is a dirty one and one is a clean one. Dirty. And obviously you'll see the GoPro reflection there and that is the clean one. This is impressive. Can have an interesting this is a telescope. This is the actual telescope. This yeah, we're right telescope. inside it now. Wow. Yeah, this is the, some of the flags, some of the guys that come and come to visit us, um, this country or university, they bring us a flag because they've got chairs in the in the telescope when they come and visit and they yeah, and then they just put it up here. So this is some of some of the share, uh, shareholders. That's the actual telescope as we're speaking. That mirror is live, it's moving. It's keeping its alignment. We see at the bottom of each mirror there's three actuators, at three little uh, silver units, um, which is the motors, which actually controls it, that moves it. So that's good. that's been that's actually live as as we're watching it. I think you can shoot a James Bond movie in here, and when the free world world is a big company, we can also buy a share here, and we can have a flag here. All these units that you see here is actually air conditioning units to cool the telescope down to expect it opening tempera uh, temperature for, for tonight. Um, so if we open up during night time that the in internal temperature and the external temperature is very close to one another. So once um, we want to go on sky, then there's no expansion or contraction on all the mirrors and all the equipment that's, that's in here. Just so prepping them basically. Just basically. Acclimatizing so, the... So, yeah, so basically during winter months when they expect it opening temperature for the night, would be like zero degrees and we cool it off. We cool it down to zero degrees and then I need to maybe come and work in here. And so you, you've got your beanies and your gloves and all your stuff. So if I need to come and work in the telescope during daytime. Okay, so tell me exactly what do you actually do here? Exactly. Um, I'm a senior electronics technician. I'm, I work on the electronic side, uh, electricity side, I'm in charge of the um, maintenance and repairs on all the, the instruments on the telescope and the infrastructure, basically. How did you get to be here? What do you, do you study? How do you get to? I studied electronics. I used to work for a, a telecommunication company for t uh, 20 years. And after that, uh, seeing that I'm also like interested in the night sky, um, I saw the ad and applied. And this is actually where I want to be. This I enjoy this very much. Though. Very new technologies and top of the range equipment. Yeah. So how long have you been in Sutherland? I've been in Sutherland. I've been working in Sutherland for many years, though. Uh, but on different equipment, uh, more in the uh, VSAT microwave type of environments. 
uh, but I've moved here working for uh, for Seoul for the past uh, eight years. I've been in Sutherland eight years now. And how is it to live here? Fantastic. I, I come from the city, so in the beginning it's a bit, you, you need to adapt a bit, but the, the quietness and uh, yeah, everything is just just perfect. You, a bit far from everything, if you, you need to travel 400 k's, you want to be at the sea, uh, bigger towns, to do some major shopping, it's like 250 odd k's, but I enjoy it. It's nice and there's no crime and stuff in, in this part of the world though. Have you seen any strange stuff in the sky? Um, that's a, that's a quite a, um, not myself though. <laughs> so we leave it there. <laughs> I'd rather leave that there. <laughs> okay, cool. That's it. Well, I had an excellent time in Sutherland. I would like to thank the people of Sutherland. Please subscribe to this channel, watch the videos, share it, leave a comment. And to the other people out there that support this channel, I have to go home now, but I'll be back at some point in some town and I'll see you there.